Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of Penumbra Overture with your host and Foundation X145 on the PC. This has been recommended by someone, I cannot remember who, I sincerely apologize. Um, I'll have your name in an annotation. Um, but this was, this was recommended to me by someone um, who finished off my Scratches Let's Play. So, um, I decided to give this a whirl. I've seen multiple Let's Plays of this before, so I probably will remember some stuff. However, those Let's Plays I saw were from a while back, so there's a lot I'm going to have forgotten. Um, what I do know is that you are playing as some adult character. You're going out into the middle of nowhere because your father has gone into some science facility and has now disappeared and you have not been contacted by him for a long time, so you go and search for his little sorry ass. But other than that, um... Yeah, this is a horror game. Um, a predecessor to the very famous game Amnesia The Dark Descent. It is made by the same people, by Frictional Games and uses a lot of the same mechanics, although I have to say from what I remember they have a bit more variety in this game than they did in Amnesia. I know in this game you had the use of weapons, it's very clunky, but you have weapons. Unlike in Amnesia where all you can do is run around screaming in terror. <laughs> but um, without further ado, let's get started with the game. Um, just to make sure I have my controls set here. I don't really care for Toggle Crouch, so I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, that looks fine. Um, that looks fine. And that looks fine, cool. Sound is fine, graphics, that's all good. What's the advanced? Alright, cool. Okay, actually, I'm going to turn Depth of Field off, because I really just don't like that in games. It bothers me. Um, there is a little continue thing here. That is because I played about two minutes into the game, just to get kind of a feel for the mechanics. I haven't, I haven't actually played this myself. And um, I also wanted to see what would record on this. And I decided Fraps is the best bet, um, because it gets the best quality with, with the recording software that I have. And it still records at... A 60 frames per second, which is really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Um, and we are going to start a new game on normal because I do not know how this is gonna go and I'd rather not have my butt kicked. So yeah, my story began in February, year 2000. For my part in this allegory, I'm not gonna make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it, so when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard from him. Pity he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went, as he knew I would. I discovered that, despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago, and said so the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever take. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realised my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day. 
and I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. Finally, we're almost docked. I'd better stow my gear. I may be far from home, but chances are I can still pick things up using left mouse and I can take a closer look at things using right mouse. Okay, so this looks like a little tutorial area. Um, and I guess I got the backstory mostly right. Um, we never actually heard from our father. So um, that makes things a little bit interesting. Um, one of the mechanics that was not present in Amnesia, the Dark Descent, is you actually have the option to walk around and click on what's in the center of your screen, or you can um, press the toggle interact key and move around a bit more like mist or scratches. So I honestly prefer this this way where you're kind of your uh, view is immediately following where you're going to grab stuff. I know that was a nice bottle of whiskey, but who cares. Always good to have a notebook to jot down interesting information and reminders. Yes, indeed. Alright. I think I left my torch in the desk drawer next to the bed. It can be opened using my left mouse on it, holding down the left, holding down the button, and moving the mouse. And um, for those of you not familiar with the mechanics of either this game, this game series or Amnesia, you click on stuff and you drag. Shazam. Flashlight switches on and off via the inventory tab or hopefully with the shortcut key F. Now where's that emergency glow stick? It should still be in the locker, keys in my inventory. Alright, so that's nice and closed. Now, as you can see here, this door is locked, and I'm moving my mouse all around. Nothing's happening. So, let's get this key. Whoops. And voila, it opens. Good thing I have my torch at hand. This country seems to exist in a permanent state of twilight. It would come in handy if the torch runs out of batteries. I should be able to access it through my inventory with the shortcut key G. Glow sticks. That should be everything I need. I want to get going before dark. I'm certain this map's a good decade or so out of date, but landmarks don't change much in Greenland, so I got a pretty, a pretty decent idea of where I'm heading. Well, I guess it depends on which landmarks you're looking for, so... And we have more whiskey, which I'm not going to need. And a note from a fisherman's wife's love letter. Dearest Eric, just a quick note before you set sail and leave me once again. I left you a little something to remember me by in the chest in the foot of your bed. I really don't know why you still only have one bed on board. Taking shifts because of it is no way to get your rest. But what does a fisherman's wife know of life at sea? I'll be praying every night for you to make the catch you need so that you can come home to me safely and soon. Please don't be gone for five weeks like last time. I know I might nag sometimes, but I do love you, you know. I've washed those overalls of yours. I know you'll get them covered in assorted fish parts in no time, but I f still feel better knowing they've had a wash. Before I forget, the Herricksons in the village have asked me to see if you'll be coming by with any trout. But I said they were mostly out of season. If you do happen upon any, don't say anything. Stow them well on the ice, and I'll do something special with them to celebrate when you come home to me. The ship's captain deserves a little special treatment once in a while. Take care, my love. Well, interesting. Um, we have some fish. If I knew anything about fishing, I'd probably be able to identify those, but um, as it stands, I have no idea. That looks like a shark jaw. I'm not very fond of those. Not being in them and not seeing them hung up on people's walls. I'm not a big, far I'm not a big fan of either. And a bucket. So I'm guessing this is probably the captain's quarters, considering that there was a letter in that chest. But, um, 
I guess that's about it, so let's get out of here. As I stepped off the boat, setting out into the blizzard that had formed around me, I realized how utterly devoted I'd been to the discovery of my father's past. I had no idea what to expect. Soon enough, my concerns were justified. I don't know whether I lost my orientation or my spirit first, but I lost feeling in my extremity soon after, and new hypothermia was setting in. I started looking for shelter. Well, ain't that just dandy? So cold. Don't know where I am. Need shelter soon. And apparently we jotted down a note. My entire head went numb a long time ago, but I can still hear the wind warring past. Or is that some kind of animal in the distance? So we probably need to get to cover before we die of frostbite. Ah. Click and hold the interact button. I should just about manage to pick up that rock. It holds me weak, but I can still throw things using the examine button when I'm carrying something. Wee. If I use interact mode, I can swing the stone more accurately. Okay. Bang. Hope to God it's not frozen inside as well. It's so weak, but if I just use interact mode, I should be able to turn that wheel a bit easier. Lovely. That's probably the animal war he was talking about. <laughs> and survived. Though looking around, maybe I didn't. What is this place? Heavy looking wooden barrel could be anything inside it. Empty box of ammunition. What is this place? This looks like a mine shaft almost. Glow sticks. If anyone gets the movie reference, which this is probably referring to possibly more than one, but um, there is only one I'm thinking of. Kudos. And looks like I have motion blur on. Hmm. I'm not sure if I should take that off or not. These barrels are mighty heavy. Oh, there's a flare back there. Excuse me. Already getting in with the creepy atmosphere. Love it. Um, beyond this point, I've opened this door, gone in here, and that's about it. So, um, yeah. Nice little hammer. Let's see, I can swing this hammer if I hold left mouse. I can make a backswing by pulling the mouse right and then following through by pushing left. The opposite works too. Pulling back and then thrusting forward produces a stabbing motion. I reckon if I hold down right mouse after the backswing, I should still be able to look around. Good to know. 24 hour ration pack. Long pass it so by date. Well, nuts. So basically, it's inedible. Hopefully we brought food rations. Brought, not bought. No point in buying stuff if we're not going to take it with us. What is this? Um, Thule? That's what it looks like. This ambience is mighty creepy. Oh, this is an emergency exit. Okay. Good to know. I should have known that rusty old ladder wouldn't hold my weight, but I didn't have any choice. I'd rather die down here than suffer that cold any longer. Ooh, don't... <laughs> don't make this game eat your words, Philip. Ooh, boy. It's stuck. There must be something in the way. Really? Oh, fie. Hmm. What can we do? Maybe I didn't get past the door. I don't think I actually ever opened this. Nope, this is as far as I've gotten, so I have no idea beyond this point. Um, hidden passage somewhere, maybe? That's what's usually happens in these kind of games, isn't it? Um, along with this being a horror game, this is also a aha 
This is also a major puzzle game, so there's lots and lots of physics puzzles. You thought Half-Life was... You thought Half-Life 2 was full of them? Well, guess what? This has even more. Okay, I'm gonna put this on one. And that should bring it out, yes. Nice! That's how we do that. Um, okay. Well, this is weird. Where's this? Oh, this is the door. I think. <laughs> Hatch is seriously solid and won't open by hand. Someone obviously wanted to keep people out or in. Um. Hello? Well, that was weird. Well, that's interesting. If we crouch in the dark, it has this little blue aura. Now, that is nice. That is going to help us see in the dark. I wonder how far the range is, though. I guess we'll find out. Looks like some kind of industrial mechanism, although there's a hole in the center and no way to operate it. Do we need a lever? I'm guessing we need a lever. It's probably going to open that door. Hatch. Whatever. Open sesame. Alright, so we can go back in there. Can we get back in here? Not really. Eh. Nope. No way we can get in there. No way to get in there. Alright, let's push this open. I may just... Hold on, let me check. Does increasing the sensitivity of my mouse change how fast this moves? It looks like it does. Maybe not. No, it does. It definitely does. Alright. Then I'll just have my mouse on the highest sensitivity. I am a bit of a geek, and I do have a uh, multi-sense mouse, whatever, frickin' multi-DPI, whatever, button thing on this mouse, so. I don't have to go directly into the options to change anything yet. Okay, that's where we just were. Wait, I'm confused. Oh, wait a minute! We picked up a steel rod, didn't we? Yes, we did. Uh... Okay, suddenly everything's really blue. Well, that was random. And... Hey, it works. I was afraid of that. Alright. Into the hatch we go. That is not how we do this. Okay, I don't know where this leads or what's waiting for me, but unless I want to starve to death, it's my only option. Besides, maybe this place has something to do with my father. Indeed. Whatever I was descending into, it was a hundred feet below ground, protected by two solid metal hatches located in a remote arctic wilderness and buried beneath the snow. I didn't know what to expect, but it made me feel something I hadn't felt since I was a child. I'd never given it much thought before, but I realized that our entire society is a network of safety nets. Emergency services at the end of a phone line, health and safety in the workplace, friends, family, lovers. All there if something goes wrong, part of a carefully designed structure to prevent all but the most mundane of emotions. Once again, I felt like I did when I was in school, surrounded by a closing ring of older kids, knowing anyone that might help me, friends, parents, teachers, were too scared or too far away. Hmm. And apparently we jotted down a note, just in case. I think this will take us back upstairs. I don't really care to go up there at this point. There could be anything living down here. Heroics are for Hollywood actors and fairy tales. I'm not taking any chances. If I face off against anything down here, I won't last a second. Caution and stealth are my only defenses now. If anyone or anything hears me, I'll be best off staying low and out of sight until I know whether or not it's a threat. Crouching by pressing left control will give me the chance to hide in the shadows. I'll know I've got it right because of the blue tint in my vision, plus I should be quiet enough they won't be heard unless something's right on top of me. Better remember to shut off any light sources, though. Basically, explanation of stealth mechanics. Awesome. My best bet is to hide for a couple of seconds or so perfectly still. That'll make me properly hidden. Oh, and then we get super blue vision. Okay. 
like that will be virtually invisible, and after some time, I should get my night vision back, provided I stay still. What is a wooden box? Okay. Not as heavy as it looks. Still, it should serve as some form of weapon if I have to defend myself. Um. It's an explosive barrel, what do you know? Alright, let's not tinker with that bottle. I'm pretty sure I heard an animal growl already, and um, we just entered the game. That kind of sucks. Okay, so we're that little red circle right there. Um, off to the left, and then to the other left is the office. Off to the right, and then the other right is storage. Ahead is the workshop, explosives, and northern area. Northern area? Okay. Hello? Oh, that's nice. You actually get to stay, um, tilted, unlike in Deus Ex. That's, that's really nice to know. Is there gonna be anything creepy around here? Hello? Anyone? No? Nobody? I can't see that far, apparently, so I'm just gonna go over to, um... Another large wooden box. Where am I supposed to be going again? I don't even remember. Okay, I'm starting to see the point of the toggle crouch. Uh, whoopsie.